Would you believe that a rare document from the first temple period could be found in the United States? Well, that's what happened a couple of days ago. In Montana, the letter written in ancient Hebrew, originally found in the Judean desert caves, ended up in Montana and was then returned to Israel. You may ask, how did it happen? And what kind of letter it is? Well, that's what we will discuss in this video, so if you are interested, please join me. Just quickly, I will be really happy if you will find a second to give a like to this video. And if you are new to Israel, my channel, we would love you to stay here with us for upcoming videos. To do so, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's jump right into the video. A letter written in ancient Hebrew dating back to the first temple period, around the 6th or 7th century BCE, was returned to Israel on Wednesday. Originally, it was probably found in the Judean desert caves, the caves where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dr. Ada Yardeni, an ancient Hebrew script scholar who had been working on the document, died in June 2018 and Professor Shmuel Achituf was delegated to complete its publication. According to the announcement, Achituf was surprised to find a photograph of a rare and unknown document from the first temple period with Yadani's decipherment. This all led to a joint operation to find the rest of the original document, which were traced to a man in Montana, USA, who owned the parchment. He explained that it was given to his mother on a visit to Jerusalem in 1965. His mother got it from Joseph Sa'ad, a well-known antiquities dealer from Bethlehem. Sa'ad was known to have sold thousands of Dead Sea Scroll fragments over the years. The man was persuaded to hand over the fragment to Israel after visiting the Israel Antiquities Authority Judean Desert Scroll Department's Conservation Laboratory in Jerusalem. So what is on the papyrus? According to Professor Shmuel Achitov, the name Ishmael mentioned in the document was a common name in the Biblical period, meaning God will hear. The most famous Ishmael is the son of Abraham and Hagar. But Dr. Achitov said that it was used as a personal name elsewhere in the Bible, including Yishmael ben Netanyahu, who murdered the governor Gedaliah ben Achikam. The script is clearly in Hebrew of the late 7th century, early 6th century BCE, according to Dr. Achitov. It's a message to someone called Ishmael, and apparently lists items to send and not to send. It's simple letter with an order. It is almost impossible to imagine finding preserved organic materials from 2700 years ago, but the dry conditions of the caves in the Judean desert are uniquely adapted to conservation. Each new document, like this papyrus, sheds further light on the literacy and the administration of the first temple period. Could this be a new Dead Sea Scroll? This repatriated fragment joins two other first temple area papyrus scroll fragments. One is called the Jerusalem papyrus, because it bears the oldest mention of Jerusalem in Hebrew. The other known biblical era Hebrew papyrus text was discovered in Vadi Murabaat and is a bill of sale with names of individuals and numbers next to their names. But can this newly recovered papyrus fragment really be called a new Dead Sea Scroll? According to Dr. Joe Uziel, yes. He said, yes, I would include it with the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's with much certainty that its origin is from the region of the Judean desert. The term Dead Sea Scrolls is a bit of a misnomer, because they weren't found in the Dead Sea itself, but in the desert surrounding it. The 
broader Hebrew term Megillot Midbar Yeshuda, scrolls from the Judean desert, is much more accurate because the collection isn't limited to Kumaran or the Second Temple period. The Dead Sea Scrolls include any documents from the Judean desert from any point in time. So if before we had 1000 different Dead Sea Scrolls manuscripts, now we have 1001. Professor Shmuel Achituf will deliver a Hebrew language lecture on the papyrus at the first Judean Desert Conference at the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem on Thursday. The conference is open to the public without charge. Dear friends and dear subscribers, so this video was more about the recent events that happened in Israel. I hope that you liked the video and well, let me know what you think about this incredible discovery. Please let me know in the comments, I'll try to read them all and reply. So shalom and see you in the next video.